Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 25. Compose fractions greater than 1 into various forms. Similar to yesterday, but now the various forms are going to be taking it from mixed fraction into improper fraction. So recall our last lesson that 5 thirds can be converted from this improper fraction into a mixed fraction. Now if you look at the decomposition, the wise thing would be to take the 3 thirds separate that from the two-thirds for a total of five-thirds. Now what's special about this is that three-thirds indicates a whole. So we know that we have one and then the remaining piece here, two-thirds, also must be mentioned that we have a one and two-thirds total. Now my students started to recognize, many students, that there was a fast way to do this because this line here is a dividing line. So instead of decomposing with a number bond, students started to say, well, this is a 5 divided by 3. And 5 divided by 3 is 1. If we were to actually divide it, 5 divided by 3. 3 fits in once. And that makes 3, and it subtracts to leave us with 2. And this 2 comes out of the three possible uh, three, the possible thirds that it could be in, so there's two thirds. So in, instead of a remainder, we write two thirds, just like we wrote on our answer. Now, if we were to reverse that, take a look at this. We have our one and two thirds. Now this whole, this one, if it's made up of thirds, well just how many thirds is it made up of? Well, it's made up of those three-thirds. But don't forget, we also had those two-thirds attached for a total of five-thirds. So it's the same problem, but reversed. Now, in your work, they're going to want you to go ahead and first draw number lines. So I'm going to go ahead and pause on B and C and go ahead, go ahead and draw yourself a number line where you can find these numbers actually located on the number line. All right, you can go ahead and draw those lines similar to mine if you have not done so already. Sorry if it's sloppy, I do not have a pen today. I'm using my finger. So, um, all I want you to do is locate four and two fifths in the same way you did in the previous lesson. So you're starting at zero, you go to four, and then I want you to go two fifths. So you're going to have to cut this part into fifths and hop two more fifths. Okay, well that's my location right there. Let's try it on the next one. Five, you're going to want to hop five. And then you're going to also want to hop three eighths. So I'm going to have to cut this into eighths and hop the three eighths over. Now what? How does this become a improper fraction? Well, the first one was cut into fifths, right? Well, you would need to find out how many fifths it takes to get to the actual location that you're on. So we have to cut the whole thing into fifths. Fifths here, fifths here, and so on. So now every single time you get to a hole, that's five-fifths, another five-fifths, ten-fifths, fifteen-fifths, twenty-fifths, and two more would be twenty-two-fifths. And I know there's more decomposing on the example. I do not need you to do that if your number line shows me your fifths and you count it all the way across. That's all you would have to do. The bottom one's going to have eighths, which is going to be very sloppy looking. Let me go ahead and pause and do my eighths. So there I have my eighths, and as you notice, every time I go a whole, it'd be eight eighths, and then another eight eighths, another, another, another. So in the end, when I hit 40, or five, I've, had, I've hit 40 eighths plus the three more for a total of 43 eighths. Again, this is the extent of what I want you to do with the number lines. Now, when you get to the next page, I want you to go ahead and do some decomposing without the number lines. Here's how you do it. 
take a look at B, 5 and 2 thirds. Now this 5, this whole number, is made up of thirds. A whole bunch of them, right? And to find the total, you just multiply 5 times 3. See, there's 5 sets of these thirds for a total of 15 thirds. But don't forget there's also the 2 thirds. The 2 thirds I got was from these 2 remainder thirds for a total of 17 thirds. Now I know in your book it might show you a little bit more decomposition than that, but this is as much as I am asking. And this is what I do want to see. I want to see the two parts, the whole and the extra remainder piece for a total. So on B, you would just simply multiply 4 times 5 to get 20 fifths. Wouldn't 20 fifths get you 4? Right? 20 divided by 5 is 4. That's where this 4 comes from. And don't forget, you also had another fifth for a total of 21 fifths. And for D, the 3 times the 8 make 24 eighths. Plus, there's also a 7 eighths. Don't forget that. For a total of 31 eighths. Now, I do want this addition, this um, decomposition shown for both of these that you put together, the whole number on the left and the remaining fraction on the right for a total on the very end. And the last part, it just says convert. Just convert. So if you could do the remainder part in your head, that's okay. You could still multiply 2 times 3 and get 6 thirds. And don't forget the other third for a total of 7 thirds. Or you could do part of it in your head. 3 times 6 is 18, and there's one more. So you multiply the first two, the, the, one, the whole number with the denominator, you add the numerator. So that would be 19 total, and the denominators always stay the same. So here we have 4 times 10 is 40, plus 1 is 41, and the denominator stays the same. 2 times 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11. Three more would make 11 for a total of 11 fourths. 4 times 12 is 48, plus 5 more is 53 twelfths. 5 times 5 plus 1 is 26 over 5. All right, if you have any more questions about converting your mixed numbers into improper fractions, which, by the way, you might be wondering why would we ever do this? You'll see later. You'll see when we start doing mixed numbers multiplied and um, added with other fractions in higher grades. But this is a good skill to do, to, to understand. So, yeah, if you're struggling, please let me know and I would help. Thanks.